Big thank you to Josh for joining the show. Now, though, we'll switch gears. D2 football, the bread and butter of today's episode. We'll get to the upsets. We'll get to the highlights. We'll get to all those things. But first, we got to take a look at these. The first released Super Region rankings from the NCAA, starting off with Super Region number one. Atop that list, the two undefeated teams I mentioned in the opener, Charleston, Kutztown. Then you go down some other PSAC foes in California, Slippery Rock. Number five is Ashland at the 7-2 and two record. You've got East Stroudsburg and Finley rounding out that top seven. Just on the outside looking in, you have New Haven, Tiffin, and Assumption. So, any surprises here that I can think of? Ashland maybe being this high up above teams like ESU and Finley with an 8-1 record? Potentially, you look at the strength of schedule from Ashland, though, and the Eagles and what they've put up with this year, it may be not so surprising. I think New Haven with, and I'm not going to be the one to tell you about the new kind of ruling, those things, not like, I uh, definitely don't consider myself a bracket expert, but they do have a new deal in D2 football with this earned access type of deal of uh, winning the conference and then being on kind of the outside looking in. So I have to figure out exactly what the hell the details are on that, but it sounds like New Haven, even if they're on the outside, will actually take the place of a Finley in this case scenario or kind of the last one in in the super region depending on you know conference representation and how that plays out but again not too many surprises in super region number one we get down to super region number two though things get a little interesting Wingate at number one in super region number two followed by West Alabama at number two and finally the undefeated Valdosta State squad at number three in Super Region number two. And that's where, like I said, things start to get very interesting. Now, obviously, Wingate. Two wins against top-ranked opponents. West Alabama has done much in the same. Valdosta doesn't have the same kind of strength of schedule. But again, their record is unblemished at 8-0. and oh. For them to be at the three, still some football to be played, admittedly, but that's kind of ridiculous to me. Johnson C. Smith, even after kind of a blowout loss this last week to Fayetteville State, still coming in at number four. Then you've got a Carson Newman team that's been pretty hot at number five, Virginia Union, with some more representation there. And uh, number seven, Winston-Salem State. They get the nod ahead of Lenore Ryan. That right there, that blew my mind. I, I really... <laughs> I really don't understand that. I mean, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Lenore Ryan, one of those two losses being to Wingate, who is the number one team, so to speak, in Super Region 2 right now. I, I cannot really understand how they are on the outside looking in of Super Region 2. Finally, Miles in West Florida at 9 and 10, respectively. But that's an interesting mix right there. And uh, like I said, we still got a couple weeks before this totally shakes out. But this is where we start to get the picture of what this playoff could ultimately look like. Super Region 3, obviously the most stacked probably of all these different regions. But again, not one team in this region that does not have a loss in their record. That's a pretty uncommon feat. Ferris State up first. They are a uh, sole loss on the year still good enough to be number one grand valley state who lost only to ferris right behind him pittsburgh state who beat that ferris state squad in week zero they're right there with that second loss um still ranked number three because of that strength of schedule and some other factors central oklahoma also out of the miaa right there behind the gorillas then you've got wachita baptist ranked right above harding five and six respectively some gac representation even after the loss of Southern Nazarene. So it'd be interesting to see if Wachita had not lost last week to Southern Nazarene, you could only imagine, would they be the number one? I feel like one to five is kind of a, a tall drop-off, but I'm not really sure how they would have handled that. So Wachita falls at number five, still very much in the picture when it comes to the playoffs here. Harding at number six with that sole loss to the Tigers. And then finally at number seven, Emporia State. Some more MIAA action. Now you've got Saginaw on the outside looking in at 7-2 and two in the 8th spot. 9 is U-Indy and 10 is Southern Arkansas. U-Indy is very much in the same boat as New Haven, if I'm understanding that correctly, in that this earned access type deal of conference representation in that they might get the nod, or they will get the nod, as opposed to, in this case, an Emporia State. I'll have to do my research and figure out exactly how that works. I'm sorry, I, just, I talk about football, I don't talk about bracketology. This really isn't like... The way the brackets are created, I, yeah, I've got my frustrations with it, but I don't nearly understand the algorithm things. i got to get into the dirt maybe a little bit more there. Finally, though, Super Region number four. 
Colorado State University Pueblo comes in at the top spot. They've taken over the RMAC. They had a commanding win against the number four team on this list in Western Colorado this week. We'll talk about it later in the episode here. Augustana, the top team from the NSIC, showing up there in the second spot, followed closely behind by Mankato. And then you go down with some Lone Star squads in Angelo State and Central Washington at number five and number six. Finally, Sioux Falls from the NSIC. Kind of an interesting team right there in at number seven. Western Oregon very much still having a great chance sitting at six and one. And you might be wondering, this is week nine that we're talking about. A week nine recap. Why is Western Oregon six and one? That's only seven games. They played two games against Division I opponents. And those do not count. See the overall Division II record. Those do not count. Um, you know, going to that record. So that's why Western Oregon is only at 6-1. and one. And you got Mesa and Colorado School of Mines all the way down at the 10 spot is something that we certainly are not familiar with, at least in the recent history of Division II football. Mines has uh, certainly dropped off a little bit, still very much a prominent team, and still, you know, depending on how some things shake out, could be on one of those those kind of last spots, and we get one of those last bids into the playoff. But uh, that is kind of the look right now at the Division II playoff. If the games and everything were to just be all canceled, and we had to start the playoff today, that would be your field. I'd be very curious for you guys to let me know uh, what teams you think are being absolutely snubbed and maybe what teams are ranked way too high. You know, this team does not deserve X, Y, and Z. Let me know. Talk about it. Um, But we'll keep moving on because it is what it is. We'll be right back.